Hello friends, welcome to another video in digital signal processing. In this video, we'll talk about digital filter design. It's a two step process and the objective of designing a digital filter is to obtain H of Z from an analog impulse response. In this video, I'll tell you the steps in detail and all the possibilities that could come in a question. We need to understand that the analog response of the filter could be given in the forms either in the forms of magnitude or in the forms of attenuation. So our first job is to understand what is given. Now if we look at this, it says that uh, between it says that between 0 to 0 0.4 pi of frequency the magnitude is between 1 and 0.89 and between 0.6 and pi the magnitude is less than 0.18 and another format that could be given in the <coughs> examination is this where the attenuation for the passband which is 1 kilohertz could be given we know that the attenuation in the passband is very small and the attenuation in the stop band is also given which is very high and we need to determine H of S. So we need to make sure that we understand both these formats when the question is given. Now step number one is to draw the graph between frequency and magnitude as we know that from 0 to 0 0.4 pi in the first case we see that the magnitude uh, remains from 1 to 0.89 so you can see from 0 to 0 0.4 pi the magnitude has dropped from 1 to 0.89 and the second thing which is given is point from 0 0.6 to pi the magnitude is always lesser than 0.18 so these two things were known I've joined these from the inference and we see that this has become the pass band this has become the stop band and this is the transition band again in the second case the question could be asked in this format also it says that the frequency up to frequency 1 kilohertz the attenuation is very very small so this must be pass band and in the range of frequencies from 2 to above the attenuation is very high so this must be stop band and between them is transition band and the same could be true for high pass filter also only the equations will change Now, while solving such question the first step is to determine the order of the filter and we have uh, two filters that we need to discuss Butterworth and Chevisher filter the first step of designing a Butterworth or a Chevisher filter is the same we need to find the order of the filter the order of the filter is determined using this formula where we need to calculate n which should be greater than or equivalent to 1 if we calculate this entire thing and let us say we find it to be equivalent to 1.83 then it should be rounded off to the next integer so my order will become 2 and let us say we calculate this entire thing and we get 3.4 then our order will be 4 so this is what needs to be understood and the formula it, for the Butterworth filter is this and for the Chevisher filter is this because we know that in a Chevisher filter in the pass band the attenuation has a sinusoidal drop such like this and sometimes in the stop band also it has a sinusoidal drop like this uh, depends upon whether it's a type 1 which has sinusoidal drop in only the pass band and type 2 which has sinusoidal drop in the stop band and in the Butterworth filter the drop in the magnitude is logarithmic 
So that is why the formula is like this. So the formula is easy, but what about this lambda epsilon omega s and omega p? Let's understand what these are. Now in both the cases to find n we need four parameters. You can see we need four parameters except for hyperbolic cos inverse and log. The formulas are the same but we need these four parameters. So what are these four parameters? If you look into the graph of any filter, the magnitude, the lowest magnitude for the pass band will be known as AP which will be the magnitude of the lowest uh, of the highest frequency and at the same time you can see AS is the magnitude of the lowest frequency in the stop band. So from here we get AP and AS and the formulas for sigma P and sigma S are the same if you are given omega P you can use this formula 2 upon TS which is the sampling time tan omega p by 2 and you need to take TS as 1 if it is not given and omega s capital omega s is 2 by TS tan of omega s by 2 and if the question is given in the other format where alpha is given which is attenuation as I mentioned earlier the question could be asked in two ways where amplitude is given and second case is where attenuation is given. So in both the cases you should be able to find out lambda and epsilon. Now if attenuation is given, lambda and epsilon are calculated like this. Lambda is 10 raised to the power 0 0.1 alpha s minus 1 and whole under root and epsilon is 10 raised to the power 0 0.1 alpha p minus 1 whole under root. Right. And if the magnitude is given, you can again calculate lambda and epsilon like this from the magnitudes. It is 1 upon a s square minus 1, 1 upon a p square minus 1. And from these four things, capital omega p, capital omega s, lambda and epsilon, you can find the order of the filter, which is the first step and the most important step in any filter design. I've taken up this example, uh, by the way, once we find the order, then finding H of S is an altogether different task. It is different for Butterworth and Chebyshev filter. Let us say you've been given, an, given a question where the question is asked in the form of attenuation. So pass band attenuation is given to be 0.25 and again, um, capital omega p is given, stop band attenuation is also given and its frequency is also given. Uh, by the way, omega, omega p is analog frequency and this omega p is digital. So, you know the conversion between the two now. If it is given as F then also you can convert it to Omega and then convert it to Omega P. This is capital Omega P. So when the question is asked in the form of attenuation you can calculate lambda and epsilon like this using this formula with alpha S and alpha P and you can calculate lambda and epsilon and Omega P and omega s are already given then you can proceed on to find the order of the filter but that was it for today's tutorial I wanted you to uh, know how to find the order of the Butterworth and Chebyshev filter in the next video we'll find the roots of the filter in design and find out h of s thank you for watching have a great day